Hi everybody, it's Monday evening and so it's Wise Woman Live again. Let me just check my sound because I forgot earlier. No, we should be fine, we should be fine. Right, well, Midsummer greetings to everybody. Since we're actually on Midsummer's Day today and I know about you but I was awake for the dawn, I was awake for the pre-dawn which in some ways was even better than when the sun came up. And um, it was a really lovely morning with us. Beautiful colours, lovely feel, lovely scents in the air, because the garden's really going for it now, flat out. And I really enjoyed it. I'm one of those people who tend to, well, almost always, unless I'm completely worn out, I wake up a bit before dawn, like about 20 minutes before dawn, into the pre-dawn light. I love it. I love that crepuscular feel. It's really gorgeous. And so I don't have to stay up all night to wait for the sun to come. In fact, if I did, I'd be asleep when the sun came up. So, you know, I'm going to be there. So there's a little bit of lying in bed and, oh, yeah, it's really happening, you know, peering out of the top of the duvet kind of thing. <coughs> and then it's get up and start watching and i managed to get some quite nice photographs today which are up on on the facebook page so you know and i know some of you have actually been very complimentary about them and really liked them so thank you for that it was absolutely lovely to know and of course it was really lovely to experience and i'm being here in my own garden um, looking out on the land that I love all around me because we're up high, about 500 feet up, and we look out at the Long Mind and the Caradoc and the Lawley, and <clears throat> you can't really see um, one lock edge, but you can feel where it is, and then you come round again and you see the Rekin. And I did get a picture of um, sunrise, which doesn't quite come over the Rekin, it will do when the sun's come round south a bit more. Um, but it gets close to it and it lights it beautifully. And if I haven't put that up, I will put that up later. I must check. But for the past couple of years, Midsummer has been incredibly special for me and a massive moment of change. Two years ago, in 2019, our house that we thought we were going to live in for the rest of our lives, it, the whole thing just... Phew, you know, the whole idea fell to pieces and we had to move. And I had created this amazing wildlife garden, which I will put up pics in a story about sometime, um, which was gorgeous. And we used to open it for the Wildlife Trust every summer. In fact, we were just about to in the next couple of months when we heard that the house, had, you know, the month, next month, when the house had fallen to pieces. At least the house didn't fall to pieces, but us living there did. And so it was like, this is going to be our last wildlife trust with them too. Oh, and I'm a bit of a wildlife, wildlife trust freak. And I'm always a member of it wherever I am, the local one. <clears throat> so that was a real sort of wrench. And there was the wrench of the garden and there was the wrench of the house, which it might be very dilapidated, but we we're extremely fond of it. And uh, all that kind of stuff. And then, so we had to look around and find somewhere else to live. And being me, it had to happen as soon as possible because once I've got to go, I, I want to go. I don't want sitting there with misery. And I do sit in somewhere that I have to leave. I will sit there in misery, waiting for the moment when I'm going to be hauled away. Um, so, you know, I wanted out as soon as possible. Paul's better at it. That's my husband. He, he, well, he's, he's not, but he's different at it. He can sort of sit and wait and he doesn't get so uptight. I think actually he's not as attached to the place or the land usually as I am. And I tend to put my whole heart and soul in it. And we have a, you know, massive cord between me and the spirit of place, you know, that, that thick kind of thing. So it is a real wrench. Anyway, there we were doing the usual house hunting thing, which is one of the most terrifying, ghastly and depressing things one can do. Um, the only thing that's probably worse is actually moving. But um, 
you know, things came up, and oh, that was that's quite nice. Oh, wouldn't mind that. Oh, no, no, can't do that. No, no, that, this is wrong. That's wrong. Can't manage that. And then on the 19th of June, 2019, <clears throat> we came to view here. Now, when I've seen the pictures of it, I knew. I knew from the pictures, that's my house. That's it. That's my house. Um, it has, as you've probably seen from some of my pictures, the most spectacular views, as I said, you know, all around the hills, the uh, Stratton Hills, and they're so beautiful. And it's a quarter of a mile up a grassy track, you know, grass down the middle, a farm track that you'd never think of turning into. Um, from a lane that is about one and a half cars wide, wide on, a, on a wide bit, uh, which is two miles from the nearest main road. So it's like it's the end of nowhere. It's, it's the middle of nowhere, actually, um, for most people. And it's like, yeah, 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 this is what I like. I like living in the middle of nowhere. I like having animals and trees and wildlife for my neighbours rather than humans. I go out and see humans when I want to see humans, but I don't want them in my face when I don't want to see them. So somewhere like this suits me. Anyway, we came. And the agent hadn't arrived yet, so we parked up and we were walking around the house and looking at the garden and peering through the windows. You know, it's like, can we see what's in there? And, um, <clears throat> and I was going, yeah, hey, yeah. And there's a, a separate veg garden and then a, um, what is now a pleasure garden. It was an absolute tip when we arrived. But, you know, I could see what to do with it. Been there, done that before. And so you're going around thinking, yeah, I'll do. Oh, that's nice. Oh, oh there's, a little, there's a little room at the bottom of the stairs, um, which is sort of almost like a sort of lobby cubby hole. Um, but it's quite, it's big enough for a chair and lots of bookcases, so it's become the library. And it did immediately in my mind, that's the place for books. And we've got chairs in there, so people can, and do, go and sit in there and read. And then we came around the front. And that was it. I saw the front door. The front door already had a cat flap in it. So that's my house. It's got a cat flap. <laughs> hi hi Helen yeah um and so you know there it was I was sort of standing there going this is my house this is my house <laughs> it's got a cat flap and that was like uh, Helen's just sent me solstice greetings and blessings and thank you very much um oh Helen I love that she said solstice I know I've got I've got fumble fingers too <laughs> But finding the house was like a solstice blessing. It was completely amazing. And of course, as you, I'm sure, know, I'm a total cat freak and um, I have a cat. I quite often have two, but at the moment I've only got one because she said, you are, I am, <clears throat> thou shalt have no other cats but me, is basically what she says. So, yes, ma'am, call the four lot. And so it was perfect. And we went, and the agent came, and we came inside. And it's, it's when you first come here, people tend to think they need a ball of string to find their way around it because there's a door here, and a door there, and a top corridor there, and a cubby hole there. And where the hell am I? Where's the kitchen gone? Where's the stairs? <laughs> we were for the first week. I mean, the number of times I walked into this room instead of the kitchen because the kitchen door is next door to it. Um, it, it's amazing. So, you know, it was all higgledy piggledy and lovely and gorgeous and had, you know, a great big wood burning stove. And it's even got a Rayburn range, a working one, you know, a, a wood fired one in the kitchen. I love cooking on that. So it was like, you know, I've just been given my dream. Terrific upset, of course. And you're wondering all the time, have I actually got enough money to do this move? Because, you know, I'm sure you all know. Moving is horrendously expensive just to get your stuff around and do all the paperwork and, you know, fill in all the forms and then pay the deposit on this and the insurance on that and the thingamajig on the other. So, it's all, you know, you, you're there panicking about getting the moving done, panicking that the money's going to run out before you've got it all done, panicking that it's all going to, you know, it, things could go wrong. Anyway, it didn't. I'm here. 
So massive change, total change for both of us in that, you know, we thought the only way we were leaving our last house was in a box. And no, no, you're leaving it and you're going somewhere else. And I was told in the garden, my guides um, told me, you've done your work here. Now you've got to go up there and you've got to do different work, more work, bigger work. Great. You know, I'm only getting older. Thanks. But uh, no, you don't argue in any way. It's great fun. And I like writing and I love teaching. So it's great. So here we were and we moved in. Oh, the other lovely thing about that was that I wanted us, I wanted to spend the night, I wanted to wake up on my birthday morning in my new bed in my new house. And it, that worked out. I got it. So my birthday present was waking up in my new bed in my new house. So it, it all worked very well. Very nice. It's lovely for the students when I can never have any students here. Um, and everything works. So that was fine. So it's like trundle along, get, you know, get going in a new place to work and getting, getting things organised and getting it going. And then COVID. Just got all the workshops sorted out, all the, um, you know, the way, when the students were coming and all the beds and everything sorted, um, getting food organised, COVID. Bang, you can't. Ah. So that was sort of like in my face. You've got to change the way you teach. And so I started to fiddle around and... I'm, I'm like a cat as well, and they say cats are absolutely appalling at change. And while I can do it, and I will do it, and I do get on with it, inside this part of me, oh, I, this, I, want to do this. I want to hang back, I can't, and I don't, but I want to. So part of me didn't want to learn how to work on Facebook like this, didn't want to learn how to use Zoom. I was perfectly all right as I was, I don't want to do anything else. We've all been in one of those, you know, as, as Paul says, oh, she's got one on again. Um, and so I had to climb through that. And then just before midsummer again, like finding the house, that was last year, um, I went for a walk up the Caradoc and it all hit me. I had to do a completely new website and I had to do online courses and I had to start to learn to use Zoom and to learn to do video courses and things like that. So there was a like, you know. <laughs> anyway, with the aid of um, seeing what other people did and asking lots of advice and all this kind of thing, it happened and I got the hang of it. Um, the first one was, I'm used to building websites, but not like this, not like I've done with De with with um, Deer Trots. <coughs> and I've never had all the paying facilities and all that kind of stuff in there either. So I thought, ah. But um, a couple of people who are a bit more expert at it than me helped me through it. And they said, no, you just want to go and play with Wix. Wix will suit you, which it does. And um, so, yeah, it all happened, and it was a damn sight easier than I had feared. Don't you find that? Every time you fear something, you make this mountain out of it. And then when you actually get into it, it's, it's just quite a decent little hill, if that. And you find you can do it. So, I did it, and it got going, and I said it would get going at Lammas, and it did, <sighs> by the skin of my teeth. And um, then it's gone on and people are using it and enjoying it and hopefully getting a lot out of it. And then this time it sort of started at spring and I got sort of rumble grumbles this year at spring. Like it's not enough. Not enough. You've got to do some things differently. You've even got to start trying to do the apprenticeship differently. <laughs> what? And um, so... I've been gently chatted up and chatted up with the gang and going through the usual, you know, dig your heels in. I don't want to change. It's all right like this. Why can't I have it like this? And then again, it's about the 15th or 16th of June this time. I started to let go. I, I gave myself a proper 
journey, dream, daydream with um, Gwyn and Merlin, the, my two mentors. And so I'm like, oh, come on, show me then. Show me what I ought to do. You know, point me in the right direction. Get me to take a couple of steps forward. And it started to happen. And I started to get it. So this summer, apart from gardening and keeping the nettles down and keeping the, the paths mowed between the uh, glorious wildflower meadows that are coming along fine and doing the washing and going for a walk when I can and all the rest of the stuff one has to do. And I'm in, in the middle of writing the third novel with the aid of um, a, a, an American writer friend who's very good. <clears throat> Um, and uh, Trevor, my Moon Books publisher, has got me writing a book on environmental gardening as well, which he wants the manuscript for in the autumn. So, as well as <laughs> all this, I now have to really learn how to use Zoom with small and large group work, what they call breakout rooms, um, using PowerPoint with it so that things can come up on PowerPoint although I'm talking and we can get question and answer stuff through when I want it, you know, so it's not lecturing, it is proper workshop work. And, you know, so for the past week, it's been like, oh my God, I've got to get my head around this. I've actually found, again, quite a lot of useful um, websites that are already doing this, mostly at this time in um, the writer's workshops. Because um, that's been happening obviously quite a lot and they've obviously got far more skilled people than, than me. And so how do you do that? Oh, that's how you're doing that. Oh, right, okay, yes, I see. Oh, right, and you come to the end of that and then you, you break after 20 minutes and then you, they go out and do something else. They come back in, you have a quiz and then you have a group discussion. Fine, I'm getting the hang of that. So. There's all this sort of massive planning going on. <laughs> Why am I doing this? You know. And um, so anyway, I am. And I'm learning and um, discovering what other people do. And one bit of it that's actually not too hard, because I've done workshops for, what, 30, 40 years now. And you do need to schedule, even if it doesn't quite stay the same. But if you don't schedule, you will miss out half of what you've got. Everything will go wafty and floating around everywhere. And people won't actually get what they've come to you for. And this is particularly so with working online. You've got to get it so that there's enough of it, um, of, you know, ex explanation with some, you know, showing and diagrams and then moments in leaving them space so that they can actually do some copying down and sorting out and drawing things because the first one they're going to have to draw things. Um, and they all are, are in all of them. And um, then, you know, picking it up and then putting people in small groups, which I do when it's a face-to-face -face live group, you know, to you know, go off to that room, to go off to that room and, you know, sort it out between that, then come back and bring all your ideas together and then we'll, put them all into the pot and see what actually happens and what's come out of it. It's quite, it's super, it's fascinating doing that. And then you need to check that they have actually got the basic points. So you have um, a little sort of quizzy thing. And I've noticed how well that's been used because over COVID, because I said about the wildlife trusts and that, well, I was always a member and I used to go to the actual meetings once a month, you know, of course, we couldn't have them. But all the wildlife trusts are doing their meetings and talks and things like that live on Zoom. And so it's actually better because I can go to the Worcester Wildlife Trust, or the Staffordshire Wildlife Trust, or the Cheshire Wildlife Trust, or the Scottish Wildlife Trust, and see their talks. And it's been fantastic because I've got lots more things than I would have got if we hadn't had to do it on Zoom, and if we hadn't had COVID. So that are good points they really are anyway this has sort of showed me and so this is how they're talking about owls and this um woman is talking about owls and telling us all about owls and this sort of thing 
And so this is how they do it with a PowerPoint. Well, I've used PowerPoint before too, not that much, but I've used it. So, okay, and then you've got everything going through and lots of stuff and you can actually go backwards, which they have done sometimes on the wildlife trust. And somebody sort of says, what was that? And so, right, there it is. Now it's la 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 la. Right, now we can go forward again. This is like being in the same room, except of course it's not because it doesn't feel like that, but it you're able to do the stuff, which is really good. So here I am, just getting my mouth off and started to do this. So the next thing that I sort of said to the gang was, yeah, okay, I'm getting the hang of the Zoom, but what do you want me to teach? And because it started off, as some of you will know, about a month ago, when they said, hunting the white stag. I said, right, okay. Yeah, I've done it before, but like 30 years ago. Great, really enjoyed it. And, you know, I was brought up on the story and the game. And so, yeah, but now I'm actually getting some of the skills together so that it can happen. And that will be a full Zoom course with, you know, large group work, small group work, exercises, this sort of thing. I haven't got it planned out yet because I see exactly what I want to do. So that was there. So I said, okay, I've got that. And then they went, numerology. Now, some of you will know that I've written a book uh, called On Numerology, the numerology that I do, uh, The Spiral Path, it's called, or Dancing the Spiral Path thing. And um, <clears throat> actually, let's do this. Let's be really smart ass and clever. If you can all hang on just a moment, and I should be, hopefully, I should probably fall flat on the face now, but uh, <laughs> we will see and see if I can actually do this wonderful share screen thing. I'm getting much better at this than I was. So there we are. And so let us try now to share screen. Where's the share screen on this? this? This is not Zoom. This I am now on is actually uh, StreamYard, which is very good, but I don't find it quite as comfy as I do working on Zoom. So let's see what we've got. Um, Chrome tab. No, yes, that sounds promising. Share that. Let's see if we are sharing that. Are we sharing that, people? Are you getting a picture of numerology? Hopefully you are, and um, you can get the book if you want to, of course. So, okay, we will, um, how do I stop sharing this darn screen? This is all very well. I'm not as good at this on stream as I am on stream. Now, there you are. Yes, you've got it perfectly now. So, um, you can see that, and um, it's based around that book. So, I was reading that over the weekend, um, rereading myself, you know, how did I do this, what did I do when, you know, all the usual stuff. And it's actually quite a long book, and there are really two parts to it. So there's the, the basic stuff. Shall we stop sharing? I think we might stop sharing. Yeah, let's go back. And there's the basic stuff, which is the basic how-to, how the numbers work and the patterns they make and what these patterns are expressing. And you need to get that basic skill in. I mean, it's like learning to use a pen to write with. Um, so you've got that bit, and then you can move on to the next bit, which is then the how do you work with the numbers for yourself or to help somebody else with those numbers? And that's much deeper and will be a much longer uh, Zoom course because I think we'll have to do it for each of the pairs of numbers um, you know, have a have a probably something like a three hour session on each, because otherwise people won't get the chance to ask questions. They won't get the chance to practice exercises and talk and discuss and start to really get it into their bones. But first of all, we need the basics. So I can do the basics. And as working out this morning, I can do the basics in a one day. Great, thanks, Helen. Yeah, so, um, so we can. I can start with 
the numerology course because I know the work standing on my head. I've now got to make the PowerPoints to show it. Otherwise, I shall be scrabbling and just talking at you and you'll go, oh, what did she say there? You know, I would anyway. Um, so you want the PowerPoint so that you can, I can demonstrate on the screen. This is this and then this is this and then, ah, and everybody's going, oh, yeah, I see. And then it's that. And so we'll be doing that. And that will be, I think it'll either be like Saturday morning and Sunday morning or it'll be all day Saturday. And I haven't made up my mind yet. And I actually need some input on this from you people, whether you would rather do um, three hours of a Saturday morning and then or about three and a half hours of a Saturday morning and then about three and a half hours of a Sunday morning. So you've got the break in between to do some digesting. Um, or whether you'd rather burn through on the whole day. So input on that, please. I will make a note myself. And I'll put it up in the notes after this talk to ask you about that. Because that would be a great help to know what you'd all like rather than me sort of dumping something on you and you actually find it becomes indigestible or it's too slow. One or the other. So the first one I'll probably do is not the white stag. It's probably numerology because I... I done the work more recently and the white stag I have to go back into but we'll see they probably won't be that far apart so that's the sort of thing that I'm doing but it's not the only thing that I'm doing because the gang Merlin and Gwyn and company and Ellen of course who's in the head don't forget me I'm keeping these men happy you know pushing them along making them do things and um, so she's saying, what you need to do is to actually actually expand some of the courses in the Deer Trods tribe, in the silver courses and in the gold courses. And one of the most fundamental things in the old ways of Britain is the first courses on the Deer Trods, <coughs> Deer Trods tribe, which is <coughs> asking, listening, and hearing. Now, let's see if I can go and be a smart ass again and get this up for you. And we will see if we can actually do this. <coughs> it makes such a difference, so I'm not quite such a cretin. But we will, we will make it. Now, that's <coughs> the bit I want. And I'm not quite sure whether this will be actually big enough for you. But we will see. <coughs> excuse me. Would you all excuse me just a moment? I need to deal with... I've got this thing called Sjögren's syndrome, which is dry eyes, dry nose, dry mouth. And I have a dry nose. So excuse me. Just don't look. I need to water my nose. I'm now going to make horrible snorting noises. So please excuse the horrible snorting noises. Ah. Right, okay, I think that might work now. And I'll stop choking all of you. So back we go to StreamYard and we do share. It's really good for me, this, making me do all this stuff and learning better. <laughs> Let's try the Chrome tab. Um, right, there we go. Share. And StreamYard. Yes, there we are. I don't, can I actually move this thing on here? No, I can't. Um, so hopefully you can all see. Now there's the, the silver members cave, um, which is the basic tools. And then there's the gold members, which is the skills. Now in amongst there, um, we've got Earth Sun. Oh, they want me to do a, an extended Earth Sun like this. It won't, probably won't be so long, but we will we will work on that. That won't be too hard. But then two, three, and four are asking, listening, and hearing without interpreting, which is something that's very hard. You hear somebody say something, you say, oh, you meant so-and-so. And you tell them what they meant without saying, did you mean so-and-so? And it really isn't the way to go to work with other worlds to tell them what they meant. And they might give up on you. 
but there are lots of ways of doing this and doing it with me um so the gang tell me will help people to get it into their bones more quickly so we're going to go with that and then we may do some of the others but we'll see but the other ones that they want now where are we are alchemical composting now that's a long course that even on your own takes you four weeks and i would still have it as a four-week course like every saturday say for three or four hours or maybe um and then the next week and so on so it might end actually being five because it is no we can do it on in one um because there's the four processes of alchemy and you go through that but you go through that within yourself treating yourself as though you were sort of a, a house or a garden full of weeds or whatever and you take out what is not supposed to be there what is not, you know past its cell bite no date no good and you put it in the compost bin and you help it to work and this is quite a process because when you tear out old things that have been stuffed in a cupboard you know a bit like harry potter is at the beginning of the films you know you've been shoved in the cupboard under the stairs they're pretty sort of whingy and cross when they come out of the cupboard and they may not want to let go of you either so you have to do a lot of work actually getting them out of you and into the compost bin and then helping it go through the first process and then the second process and then the final process where you should come out with as you do in a good compost bin with instead of all the old vegetable peelings and the weeds and everything like that you've actually got super new growing medium to help your plants grow and this happens in people so that's what that course is about and other worlds tell me, Merlin and Gwyn and Ellen tell me, it'd be much easier for people if they can do it with me. Not everybody will want to, of course, so it's still there, but we're going to do that one as well. And the other one, which is absolutely essential for all of this work, making mistakes successfully. Now, you have heard Fiona and I talking about this, but... It was a phrase of my dad's, excuse me, it's the nose again, get there, the phrase of my dad's, and he said, used to say, the person who's never made a mistake has never made anything, perfectly true, you think about that, and then he would say, the thing to do is to learn to make mistakes successfully. Now, this is quite huge in a way, because it means you have to lose all of the guilt that most people have. Oh, I screwed up. Oh, I can't I can't tell anybody about that. I've got to go away and hide. Um, and you're afraid to say. So you lie and you prevaricate and you go around the houses about it. And of course, everything go, just goes completely to pieces. Whereas when you can say, oh, blimey, I screwed up. Now, what do we do now? How do we get out of this one? And that is so useful. Now, it requires, you know, it sounds so simple, doesn't it? Uh, another dadism. Um, life is really simple, but nobody said it was easy. Very true. And making mistakes successfully is very simple, but it's not easy. And it's... A, combining it you know doing the composting fairly near doing the mistakes really helps you get the hand on both of it and it helps you to learn to make mistakes so that you can learn from them i mean everybody says well learn from your mistakes usually with a nasty finger waving at you it's not got to be like that and it certainly isn't like that when you're working with other world. um they may sort of roll their eyes and go, oh my god she's in the pit again um but you know come on and they'll reach down and give you a hand and it's okay so you have to learn all of this stuff now i'm not quite sure how this is going to come out in the um zoom workshop but we started with the course and we actually got 
um, animal shamans to come and work with the students. Now these are real live physical animals, but they're also shamans. They are very wise and very knowing and very caring, but they're also going to pull your leg and make sure you do trip up every now and again. Because how are you going to learn to make mistakes successfully if you don't make some mistakes? So they're going to help you make mistakes. This is what scares people to death usually. I'm going to go through there and I'm not going to make any mistakes, so I'm going to get a gold star. No, you're not. You'd be turn around and do it again. Because if you haven't made any mistakes, how are you going to know how to make them successfully? You've got to do the whole process. So this is what this course is about. Now, I've got my ideas about how this is going to work. And it may well involve the animals as well, or different animals, or whatever. But it, we will go through it. And there are basically, I think, three stages where you meet three different animals. And they take you through different journeys. And you learn from this, from doing this. So they definitely want that one done. So that's going to be um, three Saturday mornings, uh, you know, three to four hours working through. And as I said, it'll be, it won't be just listening to me and it won't be just watching stuff and that. It's work, group work yourself, large group work, small group work in the breakout rooms so you can golf with one or two people and right, what did she say about this? And you work out your own and then you all come back together and then you you put all of the you've got from working with each other into the big pot and everybody grows and learns from it. So the other thing that I'm going to have to learn for both this and for the composting particularly is apparently you can have a whiteboard thing on zoom so you know when everybody's sort of saying well i thought about so and so and so, and so, and so. Right, okay so i can put stuff up on the whiteboard oh, put stuff up on the whiteboard so everybody can copy it and everybody can remember it so it's all going to be stuff like that where was i let us unshare this screen stop sharing again now you've just got me sorry about that so we have these courses that are coming along and there will providing i make it i'm successful at it there will be more even after that oh yeah there's one um, that they really want me to do and it hopefully won't be quite so difficult so it might come it'll come whatever i, I i'm not putting the calendar up yet and that is storytelling. Now, I talked about storytelling the other week, and it is a vital part of the old ways of Britain. As you know, we have stories. Most, in fact, I can't think of um, a shamanic tradition anywhere in the world that doesn't have its stories. Okay? We have ours. And when you really look at them, you go, wow, that's telling me about how to live life and how to live life with other world. And so we get that bit. <clears throat> okay, that's fine. There are all these stories. I can learn those. I can read those. That's not all. When you've done your journeys, and this happens very much in the apprenticeship um, from about lesson two, Instead of doing written reports or drawing mind maps, which we do as well, um, something like that, and putting those up on, on the group so that everybody can share them, you turn your journey experience for this lesson into a story. And then we all have a Zoom and everybody tells their journey story. Now, at the beginning, yep, I know, oh, I can't do that, I'm not going, I'm going to be sick that day. Um, and everybody has it, <clears throat> nearly everybody anyway. But then they sort of go, oh, yep, okay, I'll give it a go. And of course, you've done the making mistakes successfully a bit already, so you're feeling much happier about possible cock-ups you might make. 
and much easier about them and much more competent about, you know, well, I just dropped the milk. Okay, here's a cloth, let's move on. And so telling the story is not quite so bad. And then when they actually get to hear everybody else's story, everybody, and I've never had this not happen, everybody has gone, wow, at the end of each person's story. So people can, and they do. So you learn how to tell your own story. And if you can tell your own story, think about how that will make a difference to you, even in this world, with, you know, something's hurting you. My story of, you know, being thrown out of the house and having to find a new house and moving. I can tell that as a, as a proper story. It was quite storified when I told it just now. But I can tell that as a story. And as I tell it out to my friend, to my husband, to, you know, whoever, or to you, it eases it inside. Instead of like this, with my story that I can't possibly share with anybody because it's too awful and too embarrassing and I'm ashamed and everybody will laugh at me and, and they'll all say, oh, well, I wouldn't have gotten to that mess. Bully for you then. Um, but you see what I mean? And you can actually tell it, and it doesn't matter if not everybody gets it. Some people will, and probably far more people than you'd expect, as happens with the apprentices. You know, there are, I've got eight apprentices, and they're all sort of, they know each other pretty well, but even so, it's not. Mm. And they tell it, and then everybody goes, that was great, that really said, and then everybody gives their comments in about what they got from it. <clears throat> and that helps you because they've seen things that you haven't seen that may be relevant to you. They're not forcing them down your throat and saying that's what you meant. They're saying, I got this from, which is quite a different thing. And so you all learn because you see there's so much more. The threads are so varied and in every direction and every colour in your story and you see more of what happened and that helps you again with the event that set your story off. So I the world want me to do <coughs> it'll probably be several um like Saturday mornings or something um in the storytelling course at least four I would have thought so that you get it into you. It's not something that you can really do in, you know, three hours. You need several three hours is with space in between for you to do the digesting. And so that's what I'm going to do with that. So I'm going to have a horribly busy summer, but I will be coming back. Um, every week on Mondays and telling you the latest things that are going on or the latest, we can have a chat about the latest things that are going on, whatever, with you and all this sort of thing. But the other part of me, when I'm not here and when I'm on my own, relatively speaking, here in the house or in the garden, I will be working on doing these courses. Now, what I would like from you is who is interested in doing some of these long courses? And I will put up what they are again. There's numerology, which is great fun and quite fascinating. And probably with a lot of stuff that you've never done before, never even thought of before. Because um, uh, that, that's how it is. <laughs> and then there's the asking, listening and hearing one, which is... If you, particularly if you're already on Dear Trolls, you might like to do it as an extra just to help you, help you expand your feelings about it and, and get more used to it and get more into your bones. Because I've never known any students who say, oh, God, I forgot to ask. I didn't really listen to what other world said. And so they miss things and then they have to go back and do it again. So the more experience you can get of that, the better. 
And then there is um, composting, alchemical composting. So I really recommend everybody have a go at that. Um, and I will, I will, these courses won't be only done once. Um, so, you know, one's full, then, you know, there will be another one. But let me know if you want to do that. And making mistakes successfully, superb, really, honestly, it's brilliant. And it will really work for you. So have a go with that. And storytelling and hunting the white stag will be in there somewhere in the mix. So I hope I haven't bored you all to tears with the things that are going on. But it seems to be quite insistent to say this now. So I'm going off, have my usual cup of tea because I've been talking too long. And if you would come back in the comments and say, I'm interested, I'm interested, I'm interested, I can stack up your names and I know who to contact first, as well as putting the courses up and, and advertising that they're now available. But I know who's already interested and I can sort of say, it's coming. So tell me about it. Tell me what you like. And also, don't forget, tell me if you think, you know, three hours of a Saturday morning is okay, or whether you think that you'd like to go for it the whole day, or whether you'd rather have a Saturday morning and then a Sunday morning with a break for digestion in the middle. And it doesn't mean that we won't have both, we will, but I'll see what the feelings are. Tell me how it would feel to you. So don't just say, I'm on Saturday and Sunday morning. So say, I'd like Saturday and Sunday morning because because the because thing really helps me okay and it really helps me my planning so do that too so midsummer blessings and solstice greetings to all of you and have a wonderful year and a wonderful half year until we come round to the solstice again and the sun turns around so bye for now and see you next monday bye